So, Ante Otto, welcome to Something Super Spiritual. I am so honored to have you here. You have been on my radar ever since you started doing your work with our mutual friend, Ty Cusack. And I love what you are doing out there. Thank you for your work. And thank you for being here. Oh, Jeff, that's so nice of you. Thank you so much. I love the work. I love Tyrone. So there we are. <laughs> there, uh, 100%. <laughs> the feeling is mutual. <laughs> So, so you know what? Let's just get started. Why don't why don't we start with where did where did spirituality fall in to your life? Have you been psychic from from the crib, or did it happen midlife like it did for me? How did this all start to come about for you? When did the calling happen? It's interesting, isn't it? And I was always petrified of the calling in case it came a knocking because I was uh, brought up as a sp- well, by my strict Catholic parents. And so I was always very frightened. I'd get the calling to go and be a nun or something. And I was thinking, oh, no, I don't want to go to the convent. I hope I don't get the calling, whatever that feels like. (laughs) 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 But if I think about it, I have been psychic since I was a child. I've had many, many psychic experiences, mediumistic experiences as a child. But it all started to kick off really when I was in my late 20s, early 30s, that's that's when I really became aware of the spirit world big time. Yeah. How was it making its awareness? Yeah. How, how was I realizing they were knocking on mm-hmm. my door? I started to see shadow people out of the corner of my eye. First of all, it was just an elbow or a hand or a fleeting something and you know I wear glasses not all the time sometimes I wear contact lenses uh but most of the time I wear glasses and sometimes you if you look out you get distorted vision so I just thought oh it's just my distorted vision in the corner of my glasses Mm -hmm. but actually it happened again and again and again I started to sense people around there was a young boy that used to play I could physically see him in his shorts and his knee socks and um, he used to play, he was only about, he must have only been about four, five, six, something like that, a little chap. And he used to, a spirit boy, and he used to play underneath my ironing board when I was ironing. Now, this was when my children were little. That's when spirit really started to get my attention. So it was through what I termed at the time shadow people, these And I would see animals as well. I would see dogs and cats. And strangely, I would see mice and rats, spirit rats and mice in the kitchen. I promise you, I live in London, so they weren't real rats. (laughs) But um, I found that really fascinating. I'm like, my goodness, there's a spirit rat or a spirit mouse. And I love rats and mice. I don't mind them at all. So they were, I was quite happy for them to crisscross my kitchen if they wanted to. But that's how it began. Yeah, that's how it began for me. Mid thirties when it kicked off. Interesting. Hmm. But I've read tarot, Jeff, since I was 17. Oh. So when I was a young, young child, when I was a teenager, I suppose, I started to realize, hang on a minute, I can, I, I, I can tell the future. I know things. I can tell the football score. I know who I'm going to meet on the way to school. I know exactly which pocket when my brothers were playing snooker or billiards. I know exactly which ball is going to go into which pocket. That's how it began. I was like, how do I do that? Wow. And I used to just never say anything. And then eventually I started to say, you're going to hit the red ball or the green ball or the blue ball, whatever, into that pocket. And they, well, I mean, I guess they tried to do it then. But anyway, it, it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, but of course, when you start to verse and verbalize things like that, especially with four brothers and I was the only girl, they just punch you in the arm and try to get you in a headlock and tell you not to be an idiot. So you <laughs> learned to not say anything really. <laughs> So you've been working with tarot for quite a while then. Yeah, I have. It was my first love. And and it was it was free in your in your family. You you weren't told it was wrong or scary or evil or or anything well like we know happens. Yeah, we do know that happens. Well, interestingly, no. I wasn't told it was evil or I shouldn't do it, or was I? 
I don't think I had that awareness, but um, my tarot, yeah, so I bought my tarot cards when I was 17 from a shop in Colchester Town Centre, which is my hometown, and I bought them home, and yeah, I just used to, my mother didn't really say very much, actually, she didn't oh. say too much, um, but she just didn't want me to tell her anything or or mention it, really. I wasn't really, it wasn't really an open topic in the house. Sure. Uh, well, Many things weren't. When you've got strict Catholic parents, there's a lot of things you can't really talk yeah, about. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, and I guess being a teenager, you don't talk to your parents about a lot of things anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, so, uh, so the, and I left home when I was 18. So, and then I moved to London and I was able, free to do whatever I wanted to do, do then. Thing. So, yeah. 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 And it was when I was in my early 20s, I joined a theatre company because I've got the acting background, as you well know. Yeah. And I joined this theatre company and that's where I met spiritual people. That's when I really opened up to, oh my goodness, there's all these different religions in the world. There's all these different ways of looking at the world. There's all these different spirituality where you can really be in touch with your own soul self without feeling like you're a sinner yeah, yeah. you can mm -hmm. actually enjoy it yeah mm -hmm. uh, and that's when my spirituality started to blossom through these new interesting people that I was talking to and meeting oh, that's so beautiful. that was really lovely yeah that's it was. beautiful yeah wow um so when did the mediumship start to take form yeah good question good question the mediumship uh the mediumship when i was a child i would also see spirit people spirit faces so i have a very strong memory of when i was mm, probably five or six talking to spirit faces in the wall of my bedroom they would almost bubble up out of the wallpaper and talk to me and and disappear again like bubbles coming to the top of a pot of soup <laughs> only there were spirit people spirit faces and I loved it they, I don't can't remember what we talked about but it's all very interesting mm -hmm. and I remember being screamed at by my mother one night shut up be quiet. poor woman she had five children her husband was away a lot <laughs> she's probably depressed <laughs> and I was babbling away in the other room so <laughs> but I got such a fright as a child that I ne I I never did it again I never spoke to them again in case I got this telling off so that was a real shame so I was quite aware of that but I remember when I was sort of 13 I would start to see other spirit people on the streets and things like that that I knew weren't there that I knew were almost a superimposed image in my mind's eye so yeah, yeah. it was like I could see the actual people walking along in Colchester minding their business and I could also see a superimposed version of people walking along in yes. another time yeah yeah it was fascinating mm -hmm. so all of that just carried on and I was just curious about it and then I had all these experiences when I was 30 when I had my first child and that's when I went for some train I got some training for it yeah I love that it, you know it's so interesting how we all come into this so differently uh, uh, our spiritual senses you know some of us experience a near-death experience right some of us have trauma where we've lost a loved one a parent a child a partner a whomever right for me i was attuned to the reiki in 2006 and that was my ignition of all the spiritual senses and i love how with your experience it's just been so well it seems peaceful <laughs> you know it's like just kind of like yeah bubbling to the surface and you're you have this awareness and you start to pay attention and and then you have your first child and then you start to open up a little bit more and yeah it was peaceful but also it is quite alarming I think when spirit really do get your attention you do it's unnerving because we're yeah. not taught how oh, yeah. to handle it we, we it's not talked about and so we had or oh, certainly I at the time had no teaching no tuition there was no internet there was no podcasts there the work there was yeah. nothing you to do apart from go to the local library and my local library certainly didn't have anything on spiritualism or or psychic things so so you didn't really know what to do um yeah so when when spirit really got my attention was when my 
son was age four. Four seems to be a thing with children around me, doesn't it? Age four. But when my son was about four, I could see so clearly the shadow of a very, very gigantic man who stood in his doorway in the bedroom. And this gentleman had a black cloak on him and a big black hat with a big black rim and sort of puffy pantaloons and boots. And although he wasn't physically there, of course, I could see him so clearly in my mind's eye, I almost couldn't walk past him. And I kept saying to my partner at the time, you must be able to see him. How can you not see him? He's right there. And my partner was not spiritual, was just like, you're absolutely bonkers. There's nobody there. Don't be ridiculous. Yeah. But one day I was down the end of the garden with my partner and another friend who wasn't spiritual either. And she didn't know. I'd never told anybody about this part from my partner. And my, this this friend said to me, I think you better go back down into the house. We were sitting around a fire pit and my son was in, asleep in bed. She said, you better go back down to the house. We weren't very far away, only 20 yards, 50 yards. Mm -hmm. Go back down to the house. There's a man with a cloak and boots and a big black cap. And he's just walked into your house. You better go and check oh. out. Yeah, and that's when I thought, right, this is a real thing. And yeah. that was my outside affirmation. Somebody else had seen wow. that spirit person. Yeah, wow, exactly. That gave me chili bumps. I mean, like, that yeah. was like... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I understand what you're talking about, where we're, we're seeing with our objective eyes, but then we're equally seeing with our third eye and and they're there and and yet out of the corner of your eye if you're looking you know in whatever direction you see that figure yeah but then when you look directly at it or at least i don't i don't when i look directly at it i don't see it with my objective eye you know what i'm saying right yes yeah so uh yeah i that's 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 a good story how old were you when you started seeing spirit people then, 36 Jeff? right okay mm -hmm. 36. And where were you? Where were you when that happened? Well, I became attuned to the Reiki and my Reiki master told me after my first weekend of level one, she told me to sit with myself for an hour every single day and give myself a Reiki treatment so that I can learn to experience how the energy feels so that I can learn so I can learn from the energy. I can have the energy teach me and I'd be sitting in my walk-in closet. I'd take my candle, my little speaker, maybe some oracle cards, and I'd do my thing. And all of a sudden, I'm starting to see, sense, feel, I mean, all of this newness. I mean, the, behind my mind's eye, it was a super light. It started with a big light show. And and then I started to sense these beings, these people, these, and, and then I'd start to see what looked like vignettes of memories, but they weren't my memories, but they weren't scenes from any movies or anything that I could, you know, pinpoint to. Um, and, and I started talking about all of this unusual, all of these unusual experiences. My, I had an experience with my dog one day um, during that first 30 days and and she was always, she was always close to me, but she, there was something different. I woke up one morning, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you're, you're in that twilight, you're, you're half asleep, but you're half awake. Yeah. She came up to the side of my bed and she put her chin up on the mattress. And I heard, Daddy, get up. <laughs> Daddy, get up. <laughs> wow. I heard it. I mean, play. And I was, I was awake. I was not asleep. And I thought, oh my goodness. And so I have these unusual experiences like that. Wow. And then with people and then being out in public where I, then I would start to see out the corner of my eye, these, these figures and these people. And, and I told my Reiki teacher that following week, I said, you know, this is what's happening to me. And she said, you're opening up to spirit. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, wow, okay, all right. Um, yeah, and then and then the mediumship just started to happen during Reiki treatments when I didn't know, I'd, I'd never seen a medium. I didn't know what was happening, but I knew that I had so-and-so's 
father or mother or grandfather or whomever. I knew, I just knew. And then I, I felt like I had to talk. So I just started to speak. And I said, do you mind if I talk? I, I feel like we have to talk about something here. And and they're always very open. And so I'd start saying, listen, there's a there's a man with us. This is your father or your grandfather. And this is what he's showing me. And so I was I was delivering evidential mediumship spontaneously, not even knowing what I was doing. <laughs> so then the spirit would have it, you know, l- little yeah. by little, you're that they, they, they come knocking at the door. And if they're not, if you don't open the front door, they're going to the back door. And if, <laughs> yeah, you're, they, and, and if you're hiding behind the couch saying, shh, we're not home, they'll go to the window and they'll come back to the front door. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Oh, wow. That's inter- it's really interesting how your mediumship started then for you mm-hmm. via that way. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. And then I went to Arthur Finley in 2019 after my muggle job ended and I knew this is the direction I was supposed to head. So six months after my muggle job ended, I was in England and that's when I met Ty. So what what was your muggle job? What did you do before this? I was a personal assistant to a family, an older couple and personal assistant turned everything. And I just kind of managed their lives. How brilliant. I bet they missed you when you left. They did. Well, he passed away in 2016. Oh, Oh, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Excuse me. Yeah. Um, you know what? It was a really interesting story because. So, you know how before we pass, I feel like our loved ones. They start to they start to enter about a month before we pass. And it's like they're here kind of prepping us, getting us ready. Um, I was I sent something about a month before he passed away in May of 2016. And I was like, what? Mm, no. No, I'm I'm making this up. I'm making this up. The day before he passed, I was driving to the house and I felt their parents, his parents specifically, in the car with me. And I was like, what are you doing here? No, 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 it's not time. No, not yet, not yet. No, no. And the next day he passed on the kitchen floor in front of me. And I sensed him standing next to, you know, in the corner, looking down at everything happening, them trying to resuscitate him. And his parents were there, the same parents that were in the car with me. Right. And I I think at first he was looking down and I think at first it felt like like he was dreaming. You know what I mean? Until he just like kind of like popped out and then he recognized his parents and everything. But that's when it really like hit me like, okay, I'm being shown all of these experiences and then having it being validated by, well, what happens. Um, yeah. 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 It's great to get the validation, I think, because <laughs> otherwise we think we're going slightly bonkers. Well, that's just it. You know, that's just it. Uh, it, it so here's the thing, like for me, when I first started, I was terrified to open my mouth because I I was afraid of looking stupid. I was afraid yeah. of saying something ridiculous or that I was making things up. And it is, it's the scariest, it's the scariest thing to open your mouth, but it's, but it's the only way for us to get the information out there. We have to open our mouth, right? Yeah. And you do, you learn, you learn to trust. And that's, that's what happened with me with Arthur Finley is that I learned to communicate. I learned to express what I was feeling and I learned how my senses, my Claire's work on my insides. I started to really develop a relationship with them in a way where I knew, I knew what was happening and I knew it was real. Yeah, that's really great. And the Arthur Finney College course is the best place you can go to learn, uh, to learn anything to do with mediumship. It's just the most beautiful building, the most beautiful tuition where the teachers hold you so safely and um, you get such a great education there. What course did you do when you were there? I did the storyteller with Chris Drew and Lynn Probert. Um, And then the next week was, I don't remember the spirit of the summer, maybe with Tony Stockwell. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. You did two weeks back to back. That's, that's intense. Oh, it was intense. I mean, midway through that second week, I was 
exhausted in a way that I've never been exhausted before because, yeah. you know, you're using these, these, you're building these muscles, right? It's like the spiritual gym on steroids. Yeah. And yeah, by, but oh my gosh, I mean, changed my life, changed my life. I'm sure it did change your life, Jeff. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it really did. They do call that midweek Wednesday, weepy Wednesday for people. But <laughs> for you, it was a double week, wasn't it? And the reason it's so intense is it starts well, we have breakfast, don't we, at eight o'clock in the morning? Yep. And then classes start at nine with a meditation. And then we go all the way through until nine o'clock that night. Yeah. For seven days. And mm -hmm. then you did another seven days. So you mm -hmm. did 14 days. No mm -hmm. wonder you were crying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. It was yeah, absolutely brilliant. amazing. So um, I get this question often. And, and as we were talking about, you know, sensing spirit, seeing spirit in, 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 in the city or in old places where there's been a lot of active action energy, you know, over the years, these people like the little boy under your ironing board. Yeah. Was, was, was he, was he fully conscious? Do you suppose, or was it uh, like a, a remnant, a, re a remnant of, of the past, an energetic fingerprint was, mm. you know what I'm saying? Was, what do you think about that? Mm. Well, to this day, I'm still not sure who he was or mm. why he came. Well, I know the reason he came was to, well, I had two young children in the house. So I think he was just attracted to the energy of the children, my children. Um, I had a reading and I was told that the boy under the ironing board was related to my grandmother who used to be a teacher she was a Montessori teacher my grandmother and but I couldn't in my human life find a connection between her and a and a random young four-year-old so I wasn't sure really but what he did do was open up the door of the spirit world to me in a way that was absolutely magnificent yeah and it was really extraordinary things used to move around the house not in a horror film way, you understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but I would most definitely put something down and it would disappear and it would reappear in a different part of the house. Or things would happen as in I would go to the card, have the children in the card, have everything I need, and then for some reason something would be missing from my belongings that I knew I had used to have in my belongings and I'd have to go back into the house, at which point I'd find I had either left the cooker on or the oven on or something that was dangerous. So spirit were really getting my attention in that way. We've got you. We're here. We're watching you. Um, another extraordinary thing happened with an A-port. I was in a, I lost an aunt who was just beautiful years before. And she had given me a tiny necklace. It was worth worthless to anybody else. It was just it just belonged to her. It was just mm -hmm. a cheap, you know, high street necklace. And I'd lost it. No idea where it was. And then I was in a bar talking to somebody and I was leaving the bar. Suddenly it just fell in front of my feet. Just it was just in front of my feet, this necklace. It was a very distinctive necklace. It had red beads on it and a silver cross, and it it was very close to the throat. So it wasn't a, a necklace that could have been replicated in any way by another customer. Right. It just fell at my feet, and I just found that absolutely extraordinary. Wow. Yeah, out of nowhere. Out of it. nowhere. How do you explain that? How do you wrap your brain around that in the moment? Yeah. You can't. And then there were things along time ago <laughs> my children are now 26 and 22 uh, I had a reading when my youngest was still in the womb and the read the medium I went to told me that the child I was carrying and I had had a past life experience and that we knew each other from before um and watch out for her saying things like that and of course I never said anything to my children when they were growing up I made it, it a, a, a thing not to say anything because I don't want to frighten the children at the time. I was a little bit nervous myself as to sure. what was going on. Sure. So I'm not going to tell them. Uh, yeah. And she started saying, we, do you remember when we lived together, when I was your mummy and you were my daughter? Oh. Like, what? Tell me about that. Tell me about that. She said, you remember when all the houses fell down, all the houses fell down and we died together. 
um, there was a big light in the sky and everything and the houses came down on top of us. And it's like, wow, that was really, really interesting. Then she started talking. There's a lady at the top of the stairs, mummy. I'm talking to the lady at the top of the stairs. And all of that, I was like, whoa, because I'd seen this lady. I'd seen this really, really, really old lady with a bustle at the back of her um, spine mm -hmm. from the sort of eight, I don't know, 17th or 18th century. And very tiny little lady, very, very old, wizened face, looked a little bit like me, actually, scarily. So I think she must have been a relative. <laughs> and she would just stand over the pot and watch my daughter. And then two or three years later, when she was able to speak, I'm talking to the lady at the top of the stairs. I couldn't believe it. Wow. Um, yeah, things like that. And I've spoken to my daughter since about all of those experiences. In fact, I've done a podcast episode myself interviewing my daughter about her spiritual experiences as a child. And that was really interesting. So, yeah, fascinating how that I get our is attention. fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, what what validation in its own right? You know, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, coming it from was very much validation for me absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely it was it was astonishing yeah wow so you know what we're talking about I, I love where the, the love I love the direction where this is has gone I, I get a lot of people asking me about you know paranormal is such a big thing now paranormal every parent it's just blown up in the last 20 years right yeah of course and a lot of people talk about, you know, earthbound spirits and and those who didn't cross over, didn't go to the light or whatever. What's your feeling about that? Mm. Yeah, I get asked this as well. And um, I can only speak from my experience. Yeah, please. Uh, and where I am with it, it in that. We're all eternal soul beings. So we already have a foot in the spirit world. Where Agreed. do we go at nighttime when we're asleep? We're in the spirit world, of course. Agreed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we already, there's only a little bit of us. We think all of our soul is here in this body and then all of our soul leaves and goes back to the spirit world. But actually we're in both worlds at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And so how come there's no such thing as being, in my belief, you can't be trapped here. You simply step into the wholeness of yourself. And um, and that's what I believe happens when we pass away. And that's always been my experience with any spirit communicator I've brought through. I've never had the experience of anybody being earthbound or trapped here. It's yeah. not been in my it's not been mine either. My experience. And mm -hmm. you know, my question always was, you know, if 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 somebody is trapped, stuck. Where are their guides and guardians? Like, why aren't they helping them? <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah, for me, it doesn't. It just doesn't. It isn't a thing in yeah. my belief system at all. Yeah. And how do you experience the divine? Mm, what a lovely question. <laughs> how do I experience the divine? I have always had inside of me an open dialogue going back and forth between me and a voice i've never been able to say what that voice is when i was brought up as a catholic i believed it was the voice of god so mm -hmm. that's who i believed i had my dialogue with so that was my connection to divinity um as i've grown older and had different experiences um I wonder if it's a consciousness of voices that speak to me, not just one solo, but uh, a group of higher consciousness that speaks. Um, also, I had some experiences in my 30s after my children were born where I was rejected by Catholics uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because I had two children by two different fathers both out of wedlock which was a terrible sins terrible sins apparently that I have committed here and so I was rejected from the Catholic uh, well I wasn't rejected from the Catholic faith but I took umbrage at the things that were said to me let me yeah. put it that way yeah so um so I dropped speaking to the voice inside 
and I became very angry about all of it and I turned my back on it all and I think in those few years um I probably drank an awful lot of wine Mm -hmm. smoked an awful lot of cigarettes and mm -hmm. stomped around the world and got very depressed <laughs> <laughs> been there <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah but you see they don't leave you floundering the spirit world they just don't they they're con a constant presence always and of course the voice doesn't stop you might stop talking to the voice but the voice doesn't doesn't stop with you and um so i reopened the channel of communication in the way I wanted to, not the Catholic way, not the church way, because I was still at that point, even to my late 20s, going to mass on a Sunday, I would go. Uh, I would pop into a church and say a prayer if I ever went past a Catholic church, any church, really. I was always lighting candles for people that I loved in the spirit world and so on. I still do that. I still do some of those things. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so I, I started connecting to the divine in a way that suited me in a way that I felt loved and connected yeah. where I didn't need somebody to tell me I had to do it in a certain way oh my gosh I, yeah yeah and I think meeting those people at the theater who who helped had helped as well a few years before all of that uh, and I and I made my own way forward with it and I reconnected with the divine in terms of this most beautiful relationship that I have with I I call it the voice within but really it's my spirit guide now I do believe that mm -hmm. it's my spirit guide that I speak to and um yeah it's it's just absolutely beautiful and I remember one really strong moment where I felt so connected to the divine was in the human world it was a tragic tragic moment for me in that my the partner of my second child um had come home when my baby was three weeks old and told me that he was in love with somebody else and that he was leaving oh and yeah i know let's get out the violins but it was very hard at the time it was it was really tough but um i was making his sandwiches what what i mean you know what does one do in a situation like that but make sandwiches for his trip to his new partner of course <laughs> oh my his, goodness making his sandwiches being all calm and um and i remember he came to give me a hug for the last time and my heart was beating so fast boom, 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 boom. i was thinking gosh he's really leaving and my son was only four and adored my partner and um he'd been his father since he was born and then he had his own child and decided to leave so um but within that moment within that hug i felt the presence of my guide just i can only describe it as filling me with this most blissful calm and my heart immediately stopped beating so fast and went into this beautiful soft love uh very gentle so much so that my partner who was hugging me said oh my goodness what's happened there he said i how did you stop your heart beating so fast so quickly how did you do that and i just i didn't well i didn't say anything but i knew why just because my spirit guide just came so close to hold me in that terrible moment of loss and grief to let me know that they were there almost makes me want to cry to oh my about. gosh yes mm, yeah so it was really beautiful so yeah that was lovely and so from that point on of course I you know had therapy for years and gibbered in a corner for a while but uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. after I got been over there. all that <laughs> been after, there I'm after, still there <laughs> after I got over all that um <laughs> Yeah, uh, it teaches you great compassion. Some of the things that we oh. have to go through in this life. Isn't that it, the truth? It just teaches you the most compassion for other people. And um, and it teaches you what love truly is. And so I continued with my lovely spirit guide and, and built this beautiful relationship with him, him, her. Mm -hmm. And I also built this beautiful relationship with the gentleman who was in the big uh, cloak and hat in my uh, son's room. So I had this lovely sort of feeling of these spirit people being around me all the time. And nowadays, um, to fast forward to several years later, 
how I connect with the divine is, is constantly all day long. They sit with me. They talk to me. I walk out with them. Every, even yesterday and this morning, I was out walking in the fields and I could just sense the presence of the spirit person with me on both of those days. For some reason, yesterday and today. And I'm saying to them, something's coming here because I feel you so close. So whatever it is, you got to hold me tight when whatever that thing is, whether it's good or whether it's going to be a challenge. I know you're with me. So thank you very much for making your presence known. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah, it is beautiful. Jeff, how do you, I mean, it's a great question, isn't it? How do you connect to the divine? Oh, well, um, you know, very similarly, I, I loved what you said because it, it's, it's actually the same thing I say is that I, I maintain an open dialogue with spirit everywhere I go, you know, and, and I have relationship with my guides that I met, you know, 16, 17 years ago, 2006, 2007. And there are so many um, experiences that through this journey, through this path, working with the Reiki, working with people, the synchronicities that have been, that are, are just, you know, uh, can send you to tears. It's just the, the, that, that beautiful love that spirit is. And I feel it in such a way where I know that God slash source slash spirit universe, whatever is within each and every one of us. As much as we have been told that it's out there, you know, that, that it's out there. I experienced the divine in, you know, in silly ways. Like, like if you're, if you're sitting there having a moment to yourself and, and this happened to me once years ago, uh, my neighbor had an African gray parrot, right. And, and you know, those oh, how African brilliant. Grays. I love them. They, um, they're just hilarious with their personalities and, and, and then the words that they learn. And I remember sitting there, I was just kind of sitting in silence, just sitting on my patio in the front, contemplating, just kind of half meditating, half contemplating, half, you know, or talking to spirit and saying whatever I'm saying. And out of the blue, my neighbor's African gray just started laughing. And, and it was so perfectly timed and it was so like innocent that that little bird just doing its thing and how poignant that synchronicity was for me in that moment spirit when i'm on a plane and i might hear you know there might be a child a few rows somewhere around me and I'm sitting there in my own space doing my own thing and and to just out of the blue hear this child's laughter. That that innocence, that childlike joy and wonder spirit. I'm out and I experience with with animals, with wildlife, with yeah. So it's just nice. it's it's always on the forefront of my consciousness. That's beautiful. It's such a beautiful example as well. It's just wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for asking. Hey. Um, you guys, Anne has an amazing podcast herself called Psychic Matters. And she was just nominated <laughs> for, <laughs> for a fabulous award for a, a, a silky soft uh, voice. What was it? What was it called? Silky smooth. Silky smooth, right. <laughs> and oh my goodness, you guys, she is, uh, you have to give her podcast a listen because it, you, you, you do, you have this way of drawing people in and your storytelling abilities are just like captivating. And I love it. And Aww, thank you. That's so nice of you, Jeffrey. Thank you it's very much. And thank you for uh, saying that about um, me and my storytelling. 
And yeah, the Silky Smooth Voice Award. I mean, <laughs> there's 12 other people in it, so we'll see. And it's lovely to be nominated. And thank you for mentioning my podcast as well. Um, we're both interviewing interesting people around the world, are we mm-hmm. not, on our separate podcasts? Absolutely. And so I think because when I was... The reason I started this podcast, my podcast, was because there was no tuition for me. When I had my children, I was left on my own and I had no money. I couldn't afford to get training. And so I've put my podcast out for people like me who can't afford it, but who really desperately have a a thirst for this knowledge. And that's why I do it. Yeah. 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 And and that, that was very similar to me. You know, I just I love spirit and this work so much. I just wanted to scream it from a mountaintop. So so this podcast is my mountaintop. And I I, too, I wanted to share all of my friends, all my spiritual friends, all of my new friends, you, you know, with everybody out there who is ready and who is drawn in in the moments of synchronicity that they are. And so I wanted to I, too, wanted to provide that from my own experience. You know, it was yeah, fantastic. And well done you. You're doing a brilliant, brilliant job with yours. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm going live on YouTube. I'm debuting a live show on June 16th at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. So it's going to be, you know, 12.30 in the night for you. But I would love for you to come on live with me sometime. Oh, my goodness. I love that. You're very brave going live. I'm not sure I, I'm, oh. <laughs> I've built myself up to that yet. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I know I, I'm just following. I resisted and resisted and resisted uh, until last November. I just I, I one message after another from spirit, uh, one right after. And I was like, OK, OK. So I sat down and I put all of my video of the of the episodes up on YouTube. And I've just been going ever since. And and just last month, I was on live with Kevin Lewis, who is the healing medium in Vancouver, Vancouver area. And he asked me, this is how it happened. He asked me, so what do you have coming up? I don't know where it came from. Oh, I know where it came from. I, but but I just said, well, I'm debuting a live show in June. <laughs> and you're going to be with me because I need my training wheels. <laughs> so, so Kevin that, is going to be with me in my first show. That's funny. That's superb. I'm so <laughs> pleased for you. And it will be brilliant. It will be so brilliant. Once you've done the first one, you'll wonder why you didn't start it, you know, two oh, years totally. ago. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. I hope it's going to be a huge success. And of course, I'm going to tune in. And I'm usually up really, really late in the morning because I, I teach late uh, at night. So, yeah, I'll definitely tune into that. Thank you. What do you have coming up that you would like to share? Oh, how nice of you to ask. Um, What have I got coming up? Well, no Facebook lives <laughs> <laughs> and no YouTube lives. Not yet. Uh, although I am about to start a YouTube channel for my podcast because You know, podcasting, I've just been to the podcast show in London and I got all this information from those who podcast in the industry. And they were saying YouTube is the place for podcasting. It really is. And it is now very visual. So I have to catch myself up a little bit with that and and put my videos on YouTube as well. But um, before I do that, I'm teaching. So I've got some development circles that are about to start in July. So if anybody wanted to come along, they want to practice their psychic or their mediumship skills in a gentle, safe, very fun, creative environment, then do come and join one of my circles. One's on a Tuesday and one is on a Friday. They start at UK time, 7.30 slash 8.30 depending, but all the information is on my website. And I've also got a couple of very interesting remote viewing mentorship programs coming up because, Jeff, I've just got this immense passion for remote viewing at the moment. And remote viewing is casting your psychic mind through all of time and space to pick up information otherwise not known to our physical senses. And I've just I'm just coming to the end of a mentorship program where I've led my students through learning what remote viewing is and how you can use it and how you can apply it. And the second mentorship that I'm offering is the tools required to use remote viewing in psychic detection. So we're not 
looking at psychic detection as in working on live cases, but we will be looking at the tools needed to work on psychic detection cases. So you need to be using things like a greater sense of ambience. We'll be looking at dowsing and scrying and psychometry and also ideograms, which are tiny little doodles that you do on a piece of paper that contain information about the target that you can decode and um, write out and uh, get lots and lots of information from. So there's lots of tools coming up. So that's one mentorship wow. in, remote, in remote viewing. Yeah, I know it's great, isn't it? And then the second one I'm doing is very experiential. So it's for people who are at an intermediate or advanced level with their mediumship. So I'm using remote viewing combined with our mediumship. So what we're doing is, it's called the science of spirit. And we're each of us going to be sitting going into our own power and meeting a guide specifically to work with us through this program. So as a group of students, we will all have a guide from the spirit world who is going to assist and help us with our remote viewing. Uh, so there'll be us in the, in the physical world and there will be our team of uh, remote viewers in the spirit world. So there'll be two teams working together on either side of the veil, as it were. Um, so it's experiential and I'm trying to see if we can pick up more information as we work with our spirit team, as well as working with our psychic side as well. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I know. It sounds I'm like fun. Excited. Yeah, it is. I'm really excited about that. And then later on, maybe starting in January, I'm doing a course called Elementals, which is all about connecting with the soul of the earth and nature spirits and um, things of that nature. Ooh, communing with the trees that's exciting. The yeah. So I'm just working out uh, that program at the moment. So I can't say too much because I don't really know what it's going to contain <laughs> as yet. I'm still working it out. Um, yeah. So, and of course, those people that are listening, if you are interested in mediumship and Jeff, you must come and do this with me one night. I offer a free one hour of uh, mediumship every single week, every single Tuesday. It's called the mediumship hour and it goes out from seven o'clock to eight o'clock UK time zone and it's free for absolutely anybody. So if you've got someone in the spirit world and you would like a message, come along and let's see if you get a message through from somebody. Maybe you just got a curiosity about mediumship. Come and see how uh, how we work. So I always work alongside either Tyrone Cusack or Leslie Malone. Sometimes I work alongside some of my more advanced students who are now mediums in their own right. Um, or people like yourself, Jeff, who want to come on. And, I would love to. Mediumship. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <Fantastic>. you. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. We'll organize that afterwards. Oh, um, okay. Hold on. You said something. I had to go back, rewind, rewind. Elementals. I love, I love that. Okay. So, so my experience with the elementals, uh, shortly after I woke up, opened my eyes, you know, um, I discovered Doreen Virtue back in the day. Right. And, you know, she talked a lot about the fairies and elementals and, and the nature spirits and, and I had um, an experience one day in my backyard. I had I'd set myself out a little crystal grid, and and I was talking to the nature spirits. And it was a little experiment, you know. I, I've got I've got such a healthy skeptic in my head. I just always need evidence, right? I always need evidence. Show me the of evidence, course. heaven. You know. Yeah. yeah. And and so I had my camera and I was talking to the nature spirits. I'm like, all right, you guys, we're, we're here for a photo shoot. Everybody get ready, smile big. And so I was just like sitting there after meditation, inviting everybody in. And I started to take click, 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 click. The orbs that showed up, I got, and they, they, they changed colors. One of them started out a really bright yellow. And then throughout the series of clicks, it transitioned from yellow to like a, a, a light bluish green to a light green into a dark blue. And and they, they kind of moved. There, there were about, I think there were about four of them in this set of, set of photos. But yeah. Wow, that's very real. beautiful. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Yeah. Absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very, very interesting. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll keep you posted on my elementals course. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Thank you. So, and. 
before we leave, what what would you like to leave with the listeners and the viewers? What would you like? Words of wisdom. My by, goodness. By Anne Teato. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> words of wisdom. Gosh, I don't know. I wonder what my words of wisdom are today. Um, I think I was very moved by a reading I did for somebody yesterday. And um, I looked into this person's background and realized that energetically I was I was working with them psychically and I could see that they had an incredibly traumatic childhood and I thought about my own experiences and I thought about that person's experiences and I think and I was teaching this to my students this morning we look at life so much from a human point of view. If you look at my life, for instance, as I've shared it, some of it here today, from a human point of view, you could say that some of those things are absolutely tragic. They should never happen to anybody. What an awful thing to happen. How terrible all these things happen to you. People are awful, aren't they? But actually, people aren't awful. People are lovely. And all of the people that have, my human being thinks, have, done me down are actually really lovely soul beings and if I look at my life and I'm advising your listeners to look at theirs in the same way from a spiritual point of view you I look at all of the experiences I've had here how my spirit has grown how my soul has grown in compassion in love in understanding of other people and it couldn't possibly have grown if my life had been a beautiful, smooth journey all the way through. Couldn't possibly have grown at all. I would have been selfish. I would have been uh, dismissive. I would have been judgmental because believe you me, that's all part of me as well. It's all in there. Yeah. Uh, but I try not to let that rise to the surface. You have to look at life from a much higher perspective um, and just keep a balance. I could dwell in the soup of misery and believe you me, I have done for many mm -hmm. years. I've been very depressed and very down. But nowadays, I rise above all that. How do I do it? I just don't dwell on it. It it happened. I'm over. It's finished. Let's move on to the next thing. Your life, Jeff, and mine at the moment may be pretty balanced. Next week, maybe not so. Maybe some challenges are coming for us. No doubt there's challenges coming. So I'm enjoying this moment that we're having right now. I'm so enjoying it. It's beautiful. When those challenges come, I'll deal with those. And I'll come up the other side out of those to another beautiful, harmonious day. So I like to look at life from a very spiritual point of view these days. Yeah. Beautiful. I don't know if that's wisdom. but That's wisdom. No, that's, that's, that's wisdom. what came. <laughs> that's wisdom. You know, um, somebody out there needed to hear that yeah and it it's true looking back on our lives the experiences that we went through that we shouldn't have had to endure that we might have felt and played the victim for a little bit too long but then realizing now, with hindsight always being 2020 and eyes a little bit more open, spiritual senses a little bit more elevated, we start to recognize how those instances of, of hardship, trauma, pain, struggle were strength building, courage building, bravery building getting us to the point where we are today, where we can share with each other and help each other and lift each other and inspire. That's, that's what I want to do. I love that. That's mm -hmm. really beautiful. Yeah. I, I said last week with uh, Lauren Rainbow, you know, we each hold a different piece of the manual. And so we just share 
what part of the manual we have with those who might not have that part of the manual, you know? I love that. That's such a good analogy. It's really, it's just perfect. And and I always think we can only, while we're here, take the baton up the field, up the playing fields a little bit. Then we have to pass it on to the next person who's going. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we can only do a little bit in this life, no matter how successful you are as a Hollywood actor you can only be in a finite number of films you can't be in all of them all of the time you can only do a little bit in this world so yeah yeah. and thank you so much for being here with us today it's been yeah it's been a really great hour I really appreciate it and everybody thank you so much for listening and watching again if you're watching on YouTube we'll be back again in a week thank you very much everybody Thank you again for listening to the Something Super Spiritual Podcast. If you know someone who would enjoy this episode, please do share it with a friend. For show notes, links, and to purchase a mediumship reading, my website is somethingsuperspiritual.com. You can also easily subscribe and follow the show on your favorite app, sign up for my newsletter for bonus content, and to keep the conversation going, you can easily join the Facebook community. It's all right there at the website, somethingsuperspiritual.com. Signing off for now, namaste.